What is up everyone? Today I'm making a video about yet another product. I know there's been a lot of new things on the channel, what with my 21st birthday and stuff, but we will be getting back to stuff that is not related to new stuff very soon. Um, but this was actually quite a surprise little purchase, something that I didn't think I'd be doing. Now I'd like to say a big thank you, even though I bought it, I'd like to say a big thank you to my buddy DJ Jones um, for giving this to me for a decent price. And I also swapped him uh, swap this with him for my Blue Snowball microphone that I haven't been using for ages now and, uh, and gave him some money as well on top obviously because this cinema display is worth more than a Blue Snowball. Um, but that is exactly what this video is about. This video is about the Apple 20 inch cinema display originally released 2005, that is one decade ago. And I'm going to start by saying this, one decade ago, 10 years ago, but look at the design. It still looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not going to be using this as any kind of my main display or my main setup. For those of you who don't know, at this moment in time, I'm running a triple display setup, um, but the third display is my MacBook Pro Retina. The other two displays are Dell U2412Ms. They are fantastic displays, far better than this one in pretty much every single way by today's standards. Um, and I do have a third U2412M upstairs uh, for my full triple monitor setup when I'm using a desktop system, but as you guys know, my setup is a little up in the air at the moment. Um, but I do have a use plan for this 20 inch cinema display. It won't be put into practice until I move house, so it'll be in storage until, my, until I move. Um, to give you a clue, it, I do like the idea of having a family Mac, a family computer, um, to have in the living room, in the communal area that anyone can jump on at any time and just use it for whatever they want. I think that's really cool. I had one growing up um, and I didn't have access to the internet in my bedroom for the longest time until I was around 14 years old when I started this channel or started my previous channel. Um, so about 13 then. And that really benefited me in a lot of ways. You know, I could only use the internet in a communal area, um, which was really cool. And I kind of want the same for my son. So this monitor is going to be the start of probably our family PC setup. And obviously when I say PC, I mean Mac. So I'm quite excited to see what it can do and use it. Now, that's maybe a little bit of a lie. We did have a load of these in college. In college, we had Mac Pro uh, 09s, I think 5.1s in one of the classrooms, and they all had 20 inch cinema displays on them. Uh, since I left, they've been replaced by new 21.5 inch IMAX, um, but I thought the Mac Pro setups with these displays were pretty damn cool. Um, it's the 20 inch, like I said, I do have the power brick for it, even though it's not shown. And what we're gonna do in this video is basically stick it on the other desk where the iMac is set up at the moment. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a rearrange um, in between these two clips. And we're gonna test out the Apple 20 inch cinema display, see what it's like. Um, I'm probably gonna test it with my Power Mac G3 as a source, because that's the only thing with a DVI output that I've got handy. And I'll basically show you guys around the unique signal distribution kind of layout of these Apple cinema displays with the USB and the Firewire and the power brick and everything. It's quite interesting. Um, but yeah, stick around, check out the Apple cinema display. It's a pretty nifty product. It's yet another thing that I've got to find space to store until I move, but such as life. And um, I did buy it pretty much as well to shut my buddy up because um, because he's been trying to sell it for the longest time now. I wouldn't be surprised if he's been trying to sell it for like a year or whatever. And every single week when I see him, he's like, oh man, I can't sell my display, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, do you know what, man? I will buy your freaking display if you shut up about your display. So that's quite a funny story. Um, I've bought it and I'm glad I've bought it. I've never owned a cinema dis display before. I've never owned an Apple display before, unless you can iMacs and Apple laptops. I've never owned a standalone display. Um, I was this far away from buying a blue and white Apple LCD display, their, one of their first, or oh, their first actual LCD display, I believe. Um, I was very close to buying one of those for my Power Mac G3 setup when I used to have my G3 setup on a separate desk over here a long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, that never happened. So I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to rearrange my room a little bit and then we will take a look at this cinema display. So before I fully set up, I thought I'd show you guys the cabling and the power brick because it's quite interesting. Now, if we get some perspective here for a second, 
th this display came out in 2005. So before this, you had the Apple ADC display. Now that basically carried the ADC connector, the Apple Display Connector, carried power, DVI, and USB to the display from the computer. The computer powered the display, it sent USB, and that's very Apple-like. Apple loved to have their proprietary connectors that only work with their stuff, and it was such a big deal back in the day. The, the adapters to use those displays with standard DVI outputs were like a couple of hundred dollars. Um, these active ADC to D, uh, DVI to ADC adapters, and they're still pretty rare to find these days. Um, so it's very hard to use an ADC display for anything else unless you have an expensive adapter. Um, so it was really cool when Apple brought these displays out because you can literally use these displays with Windows PCs, um, any kind of Mac, regardless of whether it's got ADC or not, which is absolutely awesome. Um, Apple were all about the proprietary connectors. If you think about their pro speakers with the amplifiers built into the Power Max, when you think about that by today's standards, it's absolute it's just a crazy idea. It's a crazy, you would not get away with it these days idea. It would just totally flop. So I'm kind of glad that Apple brought out these displays um, because like I say, you can use them with anything. For, for instance, my G3 has a Radeon 9200 in it and that only has a DVI and a VGA. There's no ADC port. And there was no ADC port on the RAGE 128 that was in it before. So with a Power Mac G3, you could not use an ADC display without buying an expensive adapter or an expensive GPU. In fact, I don't even know if there was a graphics card that went into the G3 um, that worked with an ADC display. But anyway, rambling aside about um, those displays, the cinema display, even though it uses DVI, um, it's still got sort of hints of what Apple really loves about the uh, Apple Display Connector. Firstly, hint number one is the single connector. There is no port, well, there, there's a hub in the back, USB and FireWire, but we'll talk about that in a minute. There are no actual ports on the back. There's no IEC, there's no VGA, there's no DVI. Everything comes out of this one cable that's hardwired into the back of the display. It comes out through the stand and then it splits off. So this is essentially a multi-core cable. Now, the interesting thing about this is, firstly, let's talk about power. This is simple, right? You get your power brick. This is the power brick. It's got a standard power cable. This plugs into the wall. This is the transformer. And then this is the proprietary little power connector that you plug in there, bang, job done. Your display now has power. But look at this. There is less than two feet of a distance between the power brick and the DVI connector. So that means that you have to have your power brick really close to the back of your computer to power the display. Pretty annoying in some um, regards, but sort of pretty, um, how can I put this? pretty okay for most setups because if you think about it, you've got the one cable going down, you've got these three connectors plugging into the back of your system, and then you do have an extra length of power cable going off to wherever that needs to be powered, which is probably the same place as where you're getting power for your system. So it's not that bad, but it is an interesting way of doing things. So there's the power brick powering the display. You have a DVI connector, like I keep saying. You have a FireWire 400 connector. There is a FireWire 400 hub in the back. There's two FireWire 400 ports. And we have a USB 2.0 connector. There's two USB 2.0 ports in the back of the display. So fairly nice, fairly generous, but you do have to have this power brick lump sitting um, pretty much right behind your desktop or right next to your laptop, wherever you're uh, getting signal from for this display. Anyway, I've rambled far too much about that and you all probably knew that anyway, so um, I'm just gonna plug it in and we'll take a look. Okay, so I actually uh, didn't end up using the G3 because I don't have an OS 10 drive on it and I thought OS 9 I wouldn't really be able to do much with it to show off the display. So what I've actually done is dragged over the power supply and cable and plugged this into the back of my Mac Mini, the uh, Intel Mac Mini that I'm using as my server. So when I say server, I basically mean that I use it as a bit of a, a file storage system. Uh, even though my RAID array is switched off at the moment, I do normally switch off my RAID array um, during video recording, which is less than ideal, but it is a bit loud and you can hear it in the background. But in my new office, all of that kind of thing will be sorted out with uh, proper whatever. So yeah, um, basically you can see I've got different web browser windows uh, active here for uploading various videos. So I'm currently uploading the iSub video while recording this one. Um, and 
Opera is used for the uploads to the vlogging channel and stuff. I access all of this via screen sharing, but that's not what this video is about. As you guys can see, the cinema display is functioning correctly. For those of you wondering, this is a 1680 by 1050 display, which was the same as my Dell 2009 W's that I was using for the longest time. There's one back there behind the Amiibo. Um, so I'm very, very used to that resolution. Now, if I just ping up a couple of images here on the display, I'll hopefully try and take some high quality photos to overlay, um, overlay over the video. But if we just take a little look here at um, 1680 by 1050 images, um, let's have a look, 1680 by 1050. Um, if you basically type any resolution into Google Images, it's pretty cool because you can just find images um, that look really good. So let's close that for a second and uh, let's full screen this so that we can really get an idea of what these images are, are looking like. So you can see the colors there on the, on the display are absolutely phenomenal. Um, we have brightness control on the side is all the way up at the moment. They are touch controls for anyone that's not aware. Um, same with the power on off. One really cool thing about this display is the warmth of colors. I noticed this in college. When I had my 17 inch MacBook Pro and I was using one of these at the same time, the color temperature was a lot warmer on these. The yellows and stuff seem to really pop and it's a similar sort of color temperature. If anyone's ever used a pre-unibody MacBook Pro, there was a lovely little era of um, stunning looking colors on those displays. On, definitely on the early 2008 MacBook Pro, I'm not sure about earlier ones, but this has the same kind of color temperature. It's really nice and just not as cold, um, but I'm not sure how accurate the color temperature is, but it, everything just looks stunning on this display. It's a properly nice, nice to look at uh, monitor. Everything pops. I know you can't see this on video, but hopefully you'll be able to see it in the photos. Everything really does pop out in these pictures of the native resolution of the display. You can really see the blacks are totally black, which is nice. And when the colors, each color um, change of section on the picture goes just like on the mountain up here, you can see the mountain. When it switches to blue, it's a definite like the colors don't bleed at all. The colors just pop. It's almost like looking at a 3D image on a display of this quality. You can see on this darker image here because there's so much darkness down the bottom. Now I will say one thing on my U24 12Ms, you can see a lot more detail in the shadowing here. And um, this display is really good at reproducing blacks, but it's not so good at reproducing subtle color within a very black sort of environment. Um, but this picture regardless does look absolutely stunning. And you can see here the difference between the blue and the red. It's really nice, it's a soft difference. It's a lot harsher when you look at it on um, my displays. But again, my displays are more accurate um, than this one, I do believe. Although this was a much more expensive display when it was released, but things have come on a long way. So the, this is just an example of a few pictures. Really nice quality display. I'm not really a display expert by any means, um, but I do really, really like the quality that it gives off. One other thing that I like is, even though it's a 1680 by 1050 resolution, if I just look at browsing around the OS here, everything is a lot clearer than it was with my Dell 2009 W's. Now this display is worlds apart from those displays. Um, even though they were ultra sharps, they were pretty low end ultra sharps. Um, and especially the older ones were just, th this display when it came out was 999 pounds. Those ultra sharps are around 250. So there's a massive, massive difference there. And um, this, this, you can just tell, worlds apart in terms of quality. So instead of me rambling on more and more, let's take a little look at my iSub video, I think. Um, let's play it back. Or we'll take a look at my Canon video because that's actually got some better, um, better video properties to it. If we take a little look, hopefully we'll find it. There it is, Canon Power Shot. Let's play this back. Now, my videos aren't the best um, showcase and it probably, it might chug a little bit because this of course has the Intel integrated graphics, the uh, whatever they are, GMA 950, full screen. Let's take a little look at this. And of course the audio will come out of the, uh, the Mac mini speaker. So I think we'll pull the audio down. Let's see if this video plays. Yeah, it's a little stuttery. Oh, actually it's very, very stuttery. The Mac mini, the Mac mini won't play this. 
that's quite interesting. But we can probably look at still frames. Um, as you can see, very, very nice. Now, the black bars are pretty obvious to pretty much everyone, but in case you don't know why there's black bars here, this is a 16 by nine video, obviously. 1920 by 1080. This display is 1680 by 1050. That is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. My current displays that I use are 1920 by 1200. That is also a um, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That's the 16 by 10 equivalent of 1920 by 1080. So you do get a few more pixels upwards. I personally prefer taller displays. I'm not a fan of 16 by nine displays. Um, everything that I run pretty much, apart from my studio monitor, everything is a 16 by 10 display and that's the way I like it. Um, so this is not coping with the 1080p video file at all. But in the future, when I make a video about this monitor once again, it won't be a dedicated video about this monitor, but when I make a video about the setup that this monitor will be part of, I've got a feeling that the computer that I'm gonna hook it up to will be able to cope with um, the video very, very well. So folks, that is that. Not the most interesting video in the world, and I definitely don't really know what I'm on about when I'm talking about displays, but I know a good quality display when I see one, and the Apple Cinema display, even though it's a decade old, is still phenomenal in terms of performance. Obviously, it's not up to the power of newer things, and you can grab a U2412M like mine for around 180 if you look hard enough, and that's about 80 pounds more than you'd pay for one of these on eBay. You get an extra four inches, you get a much better resolution, LED, IPS, four port USB hub, DVI, VGA, and mini display port input. I think I've got a mini display port input anyway, or have I got HDMI? I think it's HDMI. Anyway, regardless, what I'm trying to say is these may not be the best bang for the buck right now, but if you can find one for a good deal, then they are still excellent displays. Obviously, one really cool thing about them is they are Apple and they look they still look fantastic in pretty much any Apple setup. Even though Apple have moved on to the aluminium and glass thing and these were, these were definitely the era of uh, white plastic and aluminium, um, they still look pretty good because obviously they're aluminium displays so they still match fairly well. And if you're doing a sort of 2005 to 2008 era Mac setup, um, or even 2005 to 2010 era Mac setup with a, a machine from that era. The, these displays, these original cinema displays, um, or at least the 2005 ones, not the ADC ones obviously, they look fantastic. They look really, really good. So if you've made it this far in the video through my rambling, and I doubt there's very many of you, I am gonna reward you, and this is something that I've been doing quite a lot recently. I'm gonna reward you um, a little snippet of information just for making it to the end of one of my rambly videos. So that is the reveal of what I will be using this with as part of my family computer setup. Now this is not finalized, but what I've always wanted to try out is the very high-end um, 2009 Mac Mini, the highest-end one that they did. That is a 2.53 gigahertz, and they did do a 2.66 gigahertz model, but that was a BTO option, so you hardly ever see it. So I'm focused on getting the 2.53 gigahertz model with the NVIDIA GeForce 9400M. I do like that era of Macs because when I was first getting into Macs, um, and after I spent a couple of years with my 2007 MacBook, those 9400M based machines came out and they were much, much better. Um, they were just an awesome era to be involved with Apple. I used to watch the keynotes, really follow things closely. And I've never really owned a machine from that era with the 9400M. So I'm hoping to get my hands on a Mac Mini 2009. You can still upgrade them to eight gigs of RAM. I wanna put an SSD in there. It uses DDR3 memory, um, which is great because it's still pretty modern and fast. And it still scores around 3,600 average and Geekbench, which is ample for a family computer. So I'm hoping to have uh, a 2009 Mac Mini hooked up to this cinema display with an Apple keyboard um, and some nice looking speakers on a nice desk, whether that's a glass desk or a white desk or whatever, in my living room as the family computer. And uh, Jess is fully up for that as well. I think it's gonna be great and it's gonna look stunning. So that will be another project to look forward to when I move house. So as your reward for making it to the end of one of my rambly videos, that is it guys. And uh, please don't share it in the comment section or ask any questions about it in the comment section because you'll spoil it for people that didn't make it to the end of the video, but that is your reward. So rambling 
rambling aside, this has been a very rambly video, although I have had requests for more rambly videos. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I haven't sh you know, shared a load of specs about this with you guys, but I'm not a monitor person. So hopefully this was good enough. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.